Welcome guys to this Age of Empires 2 video and today I'm bringing you a preview of the civilizations for the new downloadable content Dynasties of India. Now it's going to be really exciting this 4v4 arena match where we should see all of the civilizations in the new downloadable content and hopefully a lot of their units and bonuses. So without further delay let's talk about the players that are playing today. On the left side of the map we've got Jiraz playing as the Hindustanis in blue and Jiraz's pocket is Bodkin Arrow playing in the colour red as the Bengalis. The other pocket for the team is Henk playing as the Bengalis in purple and Henk's flank is Winston's Waffles playing as the Berbers in grey. On the opposing team we have Tiny Triss playing in the green as the Hindustanis and her pocket will be Ashley Lynn playing in yellow as the Gurjaras. The other pocket for the team will be Daredevil playing as the Dravidians in teal and on the flank we have Promoscutive playing as the Gurjaras in orange. Okay so let's talk a bit about the civilizations we've got a bit of time it is arena of course so let's take a look at the Hindustanis playing by or Jiraz is playing Hindustanis today let's take a look it's the revamped version of the Indian civilization before the downloadable content and it's where the villagers cost 10% less in Dark Age 15% less in Feudal Age, 20% less in Castle Age, and 25% less in Imperial Age. The Cowl Riders attack 25% faster, and the Gunpowder Units have 1 plus Pierce Armor. They can also build the Caravan Sarai in Imperial Age. Now that's a really interesting building. Let's take a quick look at that guys. So the Caravan Sarai is a unique building for the Hindustanis, and what it is is an economic building where they essentially can have your trade carts heal and it increases the speed of your trade cards in a 10 tile radius. As we said, it's a unique building of the Hindustanis and it's very powerful if you need to get trade set up and running on maps like, well, here we are, Arena, Team Games. It'd be perfect for that. Botkin Arrow is playing as Bengalis. Now this has got to be one of my favorite civilizations for Arena. They've got so many bonuses that I feel it's really strong for Arena. Let's take a look, let's take a look. The Bengalis are an elephant and naval civilization. Elephant's units receive 25% less bonus damage and are, and are more resistant to conversion. So not only are they are hard to kill, they are hard to convert. The town center spawned two villages when the next age is reached, which is very nice with that little boost of uh, economy there. And their ships regenerate 15 HP per minute. Obviously not very relevant for maps like Arena, but pretty good for water maps. This is where things get really toasty. So the unique unit, the Rata, is a cavalry arch unit, which also can toggle to have a melee attack. And the reason why I'm a big fan of this unit on maps like Arena is because this unit costs wood and gold. So if you're a bit of an Arena clown, maybe not in team games, but on 1v1s, if you're just putting down like five, six farms for the whole game and you're clowning around, you want to get your castle up, unique unit, monks, then this is a perfect unit. Usually you'd want to go for a unit which costs wood and gold because obviously you don't need the farming economy for that. So it's very, very nice. They have unique techs as well. Uh, where the Ratas and Elephant units attack 20% faster and the Mahayana where the villagers take 10% less population space. So very good for booming and uh, it's very nice the fact that the Ratas and Elephant units can attack 20% faster. So they have really strong Elephants. You know, if you get this unique tech 20% faster attacking, they receive 25% less bonus damage and their units are more resistant to conversion. They also have a very strong Monastery. As you can see here, the only thing they're missing out is Heresy, uh, but they have everything else. Now they also have a very good trade bonus where the trade units yield 10% food in addition to gold. A little bit of action here, scout on scout action, they're running around. Looks like, uh, unfortunately, Hank lost his scout. Uh, slowly disintegrating into the ground behind the wolf. The wolf just is not batting an eyelid. And we can see the camel scout here as well for the Gurjaras. A very, very nice unit. So we've looked at the Hindustanis and the Bengalis. Now let's talk a little bit about the... Uh, Dravidians. Actually wait, we've talked about the Hindustanis and the Bengalis, not yet the Gurjaras. So, okay, we're going to talk about the Dravidians and then the Gurjaras. So, the Dravidians. They are an infantry naval civilization and they receive plus 200 wood when advancing to the next age. The fishermen and fishing ships carry plus 15. Their barracks technologies cost minus 50% and the skirmishers and elephant archers attack 25% faster. So I think the Dravidians could be quite nice for open maps like Arabia 
Um, I suspect a very solid build for man-at-arms into archers could be good. Especially the fact that, you know, the man-at-arms upgrade is going to be 50% less. Um, as well as the fact that you get plus 200 wood, you can just drop down that archer range instantaneously and it really goes a long way to help pump out those archers. The players are now getting up to the uh, castle age and Daredevil is booing at that. Uh, the unique units for the Dravidians are the Urumi Swordsman and the Theory Sadai. The Theory Sadai is a warship, so it's not very useful on a map like Arena, but uh, the Urumi Swordsman could be quite cool to see. Medical Corpse, where elephant units regenerate 20 HP per minute, very nice. Roots Steel, where infantry and cavalry attacks ignore armor. I suspect that's quite a nice technology. It's probably similar to, for instance, the uh, the Lightis for the Lithuanians and as well the Obuch for the Poles. Uh, I think they have that uh, particular bonus. So the docks also provide plus five population room. Again, not very relevant for Arena, but very nice nonetheless. And I suppose that goes a long way to give it some naval civilization classification. Okay, so that's the Dravidians looked up now. Why don't we take a look at the Gurjaras? So Ashley Lynn is playing as the Gurjaras. Uh, so let's take a look at her point of view and take a look at the tree. So the Gurjaras are cavalry and camel civilization. They start with two forage bushes to start off the game. So it would be underneath the town center here. She's already obviously already taken them. Their mounted units deal 50% plus bonus damage and they can garrison docks with fishing ships. The Chakram Thrower is a unique unit, very nice. Hopefully we'll see that. They also get the Shrivamsha Rider, which is the alternative to the Knights for this civilization. And they get the Camel Scout, which is of course very different for the other civilizations. A new unit for this downloadable content. They also get unique techs where their military costs 25% less food. Very nice. And they get Frontier Guards where Camel Riders and Elephant Archers have 4 plus melee armor. Camel and Elephant units are created 25% faster for this civilization and its teammates. Okay, so we've gone through all the civilizations. Let's take a bit of a break. My voice is being shattered by all that. But we see a little bit of protection of the relics. Relics could be quite important on uh, maps like Arena. Uh, but I suppose when you have teammates, you can also go for trading. But let's take a look at what the players are doing. So we see here on the flank here, Winston Waffles playing as the Berbers, going for a three town center. Tiny Triss has only got, yeah, she's gone for three town centers as well. Very nice. Uh, looks like it's going to be a very boomy game. Hemk. As the pocket, three town centers. Is anyone not going three town centers? Bodkinara leading the way in terms of score, three town centers. Jiraz has gone for three town centers. Promiscuitive has gone for three town centers. Daredevil has gone for three town centers. And Ashley Lynn have gone for three town centers. So no arena clownering here. They're all going for a very boomy approach. Should be a crazy late game match i wonder how long this is going to take maybe a couple of hours this game i suspect with the economy that these players have got let's take a look at the village account bodkin arrow leading the score and it's look at his village count doing amazingly well with the village count 55 villagers now i suspect he only got two villagers because he went to the next stage with obviously one town center so that's not going to be a counter but it's just good macro i suppose anyway uh, we see some oh we had a conversion there a spear here protecting that relic for Tiny Triss. Rip Camel versus Monk. I think maybe Ashley might have lost her Monk, but uh, lost her Camel maybe. Uh, bringing one relic though, Ashley is going yes. for the relics. A couple of Monks on the field already. Promiscuitive says just yes. Ooh, going for the Ford Stone. That's a bit cheeky, isn't it? Very cheeky. We do see Jiraz as the flank walling very nicely here with the houses protecting himself. A castle coming for Bodkin Arrow. It looks like Bodkin Arrow is coming. I suppose that's pretty nice. Uh, obviously, Bodkin Arrow just warns about the villagers. Uh, but actually, they're going for stone, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Bodkin Arrow is looking and realizes it's not actually for a castle, it's just forward stone miners. Ooh, Promiscuitive and Ashley Lynn looking to get hold of the relics, but. Very impressive. I think Ashley Lynn has really solidly got a lot of the relics. Very impressive. Got one so far, two coming in, another one coming in as well. Okay, Bodkin Arrow doesn't have Thumb Ring, which is a bit ironic, isn't it? Bodkin Arrow with the... Uh, probably plays a lot of archers, saves, I suspect, Bodkin Arrow. But it could go archers, so uh, still looking to go for archers. 
Defensive castle here going for Jaraz for a bit of protection. Forward castle going for Promiscuity here on the stone miners there. Uh, those are my rocks. Jaraz <laughs> uh, not impressed. Not impressed at all in the least by that forward stone mine there. A bit of a congestion here for the three monks. All from the same team, by the way. It looks like um, the team on the left are not even bothering with their relics. They're just booming it out, booming it out slowly, slowly. Uh, Botkin are up to 76 villages right now. Very nice. Wow, they're even going for this relic here. The one that they should have no right in taking, but they are going to take it. They've got military on the field and there's not much they can do about it. And these uh, monks will get the relics. Looks like Ashley Lynn is, uh, she loves her relics. I think she's got three so far, is she not? Two so far. And she's going to grab one more. I thought she was had three. She must have uh, maybe gave one to a teammate or something. Who knows? But, uh, yeah. Oh, it looks like Hank is actually going to pick up a relic. Very nice. Picks up that relic. So the first one for their team. So Hank hasn't forgotten about the relics. Worth the idols. Okay. Probably some micro going on there. University going down for Ashley Lynn. Ashley Lynn's taking the score lead. Uh, I wonder if that's because uh, the relics or the scouting, but she's definitely doing well. But yeah, 89 villages for Bodkin Arrow. Looking very, very nice. Buzzing economy. Very therapeutic, this booming. Even just listen to the woodchoppers. Just have a listen. Now tell me that's not soothing. Okay, lots of upgrades coming in for Ashlyn. Handcart going up to the Imperial Age. She's queued up Imperial Age. Very nice. Let's check out the uh, research times there, actually. That would have been nice to have had. We do see that uh, Grey is already on the way to Imperial Age as well as uh, Jiraz. The two flanks are all the way up to uh, almost 90% for Imperial Age. <laughs> Very nice. The villager there is just going to poke away at that castle. A very long time. I suspect just doing one damage. She's on a mission. And a forwarding here going for Winston Waffles and Hank. Looking to put some aggression. A couple of archery ranges for the Berbers. And siege workshops going for Hank. Ooh, could be going for the uh, armoured elephants. As you guys know, the new DLC civilizations have armoured elephants instead of siege rams. Uh, for a lot of the civilizations, so that could be very nice to see. Ooh, a couple of genitals coming out for the, the Berbers player, Winston Waffles, going across the map, looking to throw some javelins at the wolf. The wolf will go down. Okay, looks like Ashlyn's going for the Shivamsha ride is no elephants here. Fourth town center going for Ashley. She's gonna boom it away. Fourth town center already up and running for Bodkin Arrow. I do like the uh, the look of the town centers as well. Is that something new? It feels like there's something new uh, for the civilizations here. Very nice, especially the Bengalis. Oh no, I think it's because I think it's because Bodkin Arrow is an Imperial Age. Uh, it looks like they changed the look of the town centres when they advanced to the ages. Very nice. A lot of siege workshops. Let's take a look at what Hank's got queued up here. Pro, I'm suspecting it's the armored elephants. I hope it's the armored elephants. Yep, armored elephants coming in. Going to be seeing a lot of of those armored elephants. Going to be tricky for the other civilizations to get rid of it. Siege, Daredevil says. Siege. They need siege. Very important. Oh, I lost the, lost the uh, castle there. So the trebuchets here for Jiraz, the fast Imperial t sort of timing, managed to get rid of that. And the promiscuative is now in the Imperial Age as well. And so should be looking to do some damage. Is on three town centers, as we said, nothing changed there. Ooh, elephant archers being made by Bodkin Arrow. Holy smokes, as a Bengali civilization. Now the Bengalis, as we said, um, they receive 25% less bonus damage, less resistant, they're more resistant to conversion and uh, the elephant units attack 20% faster if he's got the technology. Let's have a look. I wonder if he does have the tech. Bodkin Arrow. We'll need a castle for that though. So it doesn't seem like he has a castle. I don't think he has that technology. 
have lots of archery rangers going down for the camel archer. So it looks like camel archer and uh, oh, the, are these the gulam? Yeah. So camel archer, gulam and trebuchets on this left side. On the right side, we have the armored elephants and genitors battering down those walls for Tiny Triss and a lot of trouble. Camels coming out for Tiny Triss, which is actually quite a nice play there alongside a couple of Shivamsha Rider. Now, you might see this little white um, kind of bar here, and that's what that, what that is, is the Shivamsha Rider have a bit of a bonus of avoiding arrows. So they kind of soak up arrow fire and they have that kind of charge for that. Once that depletes, then obviously that goes. But uh, it's very nice, kind of unique me mechanic for this unit. So the armored elephants, oh my smokes, they're actually now siege elephants. They, they've been upgraded. They're really making short work of these walls, opening up the base of Tiny Triss. She's under a lot of trouble. Uh, she's booming away though. Three town centers going full camels though on this side. So the camels should deal with the siege elephants pretty nicely, I suspect. Uh, but we shall see. Elephant archers here on the left. Trying to batter down the walls. They need a bit more siege. A couple of trebuchets though. Should be enough. An armoured elephant. A siege elephant coming forward though. Uh, looks like Ashley Lynn's team on the right here. Daredevil. Tiny Triss. And Promiscuative. Are under a lot of pressure. And kind of struggling. And a big fight here though. Actually it looks like the Ashley Lynn and Tiny Triss. Should take this fight very nicely with the camels. Uh, the camels are mixed in with Shivamsha Rider. Uh, they're not upgraded these camels. So they're not in Imperial camels yet. Uh, or elite camels. Well, now they've got heavy camel riders. So the heavy camel upgrade just got in uh, for both players. They've got heavy camels and they actually clear that out very nicely. So they're under a lot of pressure here now. Um, Hank and Winston Waffles taking it into some scorpions as well. Going to need to have a switch of units for sure. On the left side though, the elephant archers are now in with the trebuchets behind. And Promiscuative is actually looking under a lot of pressure. Has got Hussar and Arbs there. To defend but that probably is not going to be enough there's a lot of elephant archers here for bodkin arrow that booming from bodkin arrow really helped he is on 135 bills the leader of the pack right now and is doing very very well ashley on the other side is uh backing the other side with the camels especially now that this side is a bit more under control for tiny tris tiny tris is a little less under pressure could do quite well to wall this up uh to bide some time whilst ashley Lynn tries to go to the other side to help but under a lot of pressure here on the right here a lot of camel archers here for Bodkin Arrow 30. 34 Bodkin Arrow stealing the show here, it seems. And it's going to be doing a lot of damage. The Genital is doing very nicely as well uh, to get rid of the base of Promiscuity. It's going to be tricky. It's going to be tricky. It's tricky, tricky, tricky. Off they went. So many anti archer. Got to switch. Yep. Daredevil's going to have to switch from the Arbs. The camels have arrived. And the camels should be able to do a lot of work to clear this up. So it's very nice here for uh, Ashley Lynn to help her teammates. Going to be taking out the siege. The trebuchets go down. And uh, these elephant archers are actually pretty uh, exposed here. They're going to be going down very nicely trapped. And Ashley Lynn bails the team out on the other side just for now. But this could spell trouble. A lot of siege elephants, scorpions and genitals on the right side. Uh, a castle going down for Bodkin Arrow. Forward castle, nice positioning there. That would be very useful to push off from. Uh, but Rip Promi, yeah, Promiscus, the orange player, has been struggling. The elephant archers have done a lot of damage, genitals and trebuchets alike. Uh, probably going to have to be running, is running with villagers over there to that wood line. So definitely the advantage for Jeraz's side here on the left side of this map. Promiscuative says thank you. I'm not sure, too sure what that was for. Maybe they got slung some resources, maybe. And let's take a look at the right side. So we see the genitals, scorpions, and, uh, and uh, siege elephants looking to take out this castle. Probably will go down. These siege elephants are nasty. They just rip through buildings for sure. Uh, sorry about the lag. I suspect it's just a lot going on with these uh, units. So many units on the field causing that lag for me, I'm afraid. Sorry about that. But hopefully it won't last too long. Arbs here on the field looking to sweep up. Uh, whatever remains of the army on the left side. A bit of a tech switch here. Imperial Camel Riders coming in for Jiraz. Nice switch there to mix in with the Elephant Archers for Bodkin Arrow. Looking to secure that left side. And Halberdier added into the mix for Hank. Very nice to protect the Siege Elephants. The Siege Elephants moving across the map. But might be sniped by these Camels. And Ashlyn has the Camels in a very nice spot. But the Halberdiers will be doing good work there. And that's a very bad fight for Ashley Lynn. Uh, the Halberdiers will rip through those camels 
won't they? Maybe not. I take that back. The halberdiers didn't do nearly as enough damage as I suspected they would. Holy smokes, I take it all back. Those camels are going to rip through those uh, siege elephants. They're making their way back. They're not the fastest unit in the world, but they will be making their way back. On the left side, though, a bit of stabilization going on. Uh, Daredevil has managed to get a defensive castle in a nice spot there. Promiscuative still has some semblance of his original base, looking to recover some of that eco and build again. On the right side, we do see Imperial Camel Riders from Ashley, as well as Tiny Trist looking to cause some damage. And the, uh, the Halberdier switch from Hank will prove useful if he can actually get the numbers up. But it doesn't look like he just has enough numbers just yet. I don't think we see any trade being set up just yet. Quite a lot of bit of gold still on the map. So we might see trade coming in sooner or later. But Elephant Archers are still the play here for Bodkin Arrow and uh, the Imperial Camel Riders for Jiraz on the left side. Now... They need to buy some time for Promiscuative to get back into the game. The village count from Promiscuative is at 94, which is not horrendous, actually. All things considered, that's actually not too bad. So Promiscuative do really well to stay in the game. Kept on booming and is stonewalling the original base. Oh, but there's a hole and the Imperial Camel Riders are in. That's so rough for Promiscuative. Oh, that's so, so rough. And these Imperial Camel Riders are going to be idling the economy, picking villages again. Promiscuative just does not catch a break. On the right side, Camel Riders again from Ashley and Tiny Triss looking to dominate this side while they buy time for Promiscuative to get a bit better of an economy and back into the game. Pure Camel Riders, as you can see though, has been harassing the economy and Promiscuative has a lot of idle villages, I'm afraid. There's not much you can do about that. Uh, they're all very much in harm's way. 30 idle villages here. Uh, and the mill has been destroyed, so Promiscuative lost the mill and the uh, constant gathering of the sheep. Will the camel riders snipe the sheep? Looks like it. They are absolutely slaughtering those sheep. Uh, looks like there's a defensive castle there going for Daredevil there. Nicely positioned. If that goes up, which it probably will, especially with this support from uh, um, Promiscuative with a heavy camel rider, he's done very nicely to get those units on the field, especially considering how much damage he's taken. Tiny Triss going for elite skirmishers to go for the genitors, and it looks like uh, this side is looking very dangerous. So we might be seeing a bit of a swing of the match actually here, because uh, they're looking very strong. Hassar now is in for Ashley Lin, probably running out of gold, maybe looking to set up trade at some point. Okay, looking at the fight, actually they're pushing on both sides, so Promiscuative with the Heavy Camel Riders, as well as Daredevil with the Arbs and Scorpions are behind, doing very nicely here to put some pressure. This looks actually very ominous. Quite a lot of Elephant Archers, but I don't think that's going to be enough for what they have in store. And also on the right side, Tiny Triss and Ashley Lin are really pushing. This is looking very, very good. Promiscuative has slung some food from Daredevils, and Promiscuative is very appreciative of that. A uh, defensive castle trying to go up for Winston Waffles, it probably won't go up. And it looks like this game is swinging, guys. It's swinging in the other direction somehow. And this army here on the left, or Promiscuative and Daredevils looking very strong. Still quite a lot of Elephant Archers there in the mix, though. So that should be able to hold just for a little while. But Jiraz is really struggling. Jiraz is really struggling with the unit production. Has got some trade running. Um, so that will be nice for the gold income. Uh, it will take some time for that to pay off. And this is very nice for Daredevil. Getting the forward gold here, which will really boost the economy to afford those expensive units. And the Elephant Archers are actually doing very well. Let's take a look at the other side. On the other side, Armoured or Siege Elephants coming in for Ashley Lin just to look to basically push really hard with the Siege. Very nice here to get rid of some of the production buildings. And it's looking very good for, for Ashley Lin's team here. <laughs> okay, the devil is concerned about the elephant archers, wondering how the heck do they get beaten. It's quite the mass there, especially with the Bengali's bonuses. Okay, let's take a look. I want to see if there are any traders. Tiny Trist does have trades set up though. Three or four markets there on the right side. 
Okay, Daredevil does have Siege on as he says, looking to hopefully try and get rid of his Elephant Archers, I suspect. <laughs> okay, a lot of army here on the right side. Apologies for the lagging. And a forward castle going down for Daredevil as well. Looking to really secure that side, and they've done so well to do that in this game. Okay, something that might help actually, guys, is if I change the options, if I go down on the uh, graphics a little bit, if I, it was actually on Ultra to be fair, so let's go to Medium. That should actually help things quite a bit. Okay, Champion's coming in for Hank. So it looks like the Champion Switch is in play, looking to cause some damage. Okay, Hassel's coming in for Jiraz, probably running out of gold. Adding into the mix of the Elephant Archers, that massive Elephant Archers just been there for the whole game. Difficult to stop, but we do now see some Siege Elephants coming in for Ashley Lynn to put extra pressure to really push forward on this right side of the match. The Elephant Archers are pushing forward. Okay, let's just change the graphic settings once more time. Okay, let's see if that helps. On the right side, we do now see some trebuchets coming in for Ashley Lynn, extra siege as well as the siege elephants, looking to push hard to get rid of these castles for Winston Waffles. Nice massive genitals here for Winston Waffles looking to cause some damage, but uh, they, they are holding, they are holding on the right side, and it looks like Promiscutive is way back into the game with 132 builds, it's actually got more villagers than Jiraz at the moment, so looking very strong on that side. Okay, Halberdier and Elephant Archers, as well as Imperial Camels coming up back for Jiraz. I think Jiraz has been saving the gold for a rainy day. They do have trade. A couple of Hussars stuck in the base. Could be useful to be putting those out on the front line. But yeah, lots of trade going on for Jiraz's side. And that's actually really important. Let's see if they have any trade for the uh, other team. A Tiny Trist does have a couple of trade cards there, uh, but not all too many. Actually, quite a few. Tiny Trist actually has quite a lot of trade there. Which is very nice. So does Daredevil. So trade is well underway for both teams. And they're looking to have this kind of walling up to get hold of the map. This arena game is absolutely insane. So much going on. Thankfully, it's a bit more watchable now that I've dropped the graphics down to low. Holy smokes, there's a lot of onagers here for Daredevils. This could actually be what changes this game. Will these Siege onagers 
deal a killer blow to these elephant archers. Will the elephant archers go down once and for all? Or will the siege archers get sniped? Let's see. Looks like Bodkin Arrow is microing really well, and it looks like the siege archers won't even get close. Not a single volley has gone off, and that's quite unfortunate. The siege archers, so many resources there just being lost. They tried their best to get rid of the elephant archers, they just couldn't do it. On the right side, we see another massive fight. So much going on. The siege for Grey is going to be going down the trebuchets. We'll be able to get rid of some of the production buildings there, which is very nice. Uh, but there's a massive battle here. A lot of, of the siege elephants going forward. A couple of uh, siege on it, mangonels, rather, for Henk looking to do some damage. And it looks like Henk and Wizard Waffles are pushing back on this side, which is actually really impressive. On the left side, the Elephant Archers are, are holding really well. And Daredevil has done such a great job of getting these three castles to protect this eco and this side. Okay, they're really pushing on this right side now. The genitors, the uh, the trebuchets are looking really strong, actually, I have to say. And the halberdiers there for Hank in support. And they're actually really struggling again on this side. I wonder why that's the case. It looks like actually Ashlyn is kind of focusing a bit more down the middle of things. Looking to get a lot of production here, just raiding here as well. So it looks like going for a bit of a killer blow there on the middle. On the left side, it's a bit of a stalemate here. Bit of a stalemate, not enough siege here for uh, Bodkin Arrow and uh, Jaraz. There's three castles here that they just won't be able to get rid of without siege. So it looks like almost that Jaraz and Bodkin Arrow are looking to just sort of hold this position. And if they can hold the position on the left and push on the right, that could be their win condition. So definitely a back and forth game. Four trebs here looking very strong for Grey. Uh, those trebs need to go down uh, before they cause too much more damage for Tiny Triss because. Uh, they will be back into the trade if they can get hold of this trade line uh, that is definitely a really strong win condition for the team on the left It looks like Siege Elephants here on the right as well for uh, Purple is going to do a lot of damage, get rid of these walls and they can see the trade now. It looks like they're going for the trade. Getting the trade here could be so crucial. Uh, Defensive Castle trying to go up for Ashling. In fact, it does go up, but there are four trebs immediately going to fire at it. And so this castle will probably go down as quick as it was built. Which is pretty rough, I have to say. That was trying to protect the trade, but the trade is now suffering. And could this be the beginning of the end? But there are a lot of Hussars there for Ashling. If those Hussars can do some damage, that could be a very big problem for this army. But if they can't, that castle does go down. The trade is going down as well with it, or at least it's definitely being disrupted. And uh, that will be difficult for them to afford any gold units. A couple of champions now here for purple as well to add into the mix. On the left side, the Elephant Archers are doing such a great job of holding. It's pretty insane how they've completely held that. Oh, and there's been a raid. There are some Hussars in the eco of Jiraz. They managed to sneak in, and Jiraz is going to have to sort that out because there is the trade there. So they're trying to disrupt the trade as much as they can. On the right side, the champion switch looks to be a very nice one. Uh, Ashley Lynn looking to get as much of her units over on this side to protect the trade. And a nice forward castle going down all purple. This is such a great castle if it goes up. And it should go up. Uh, I say that, but you never know. There's quite a few Hussar there. Quite a few halves as well. But the Hussar might look to try and deny this castle. And if it does go up, that's a very nice castle position. In fact, the Imperial Camel Riders for Tiny Triss should be able to deny that. That's quite rough. 
but actually, having said that, no, the castle will go up. There are enough villagers just about building that, and that castle will be very, very strong. Ooh, a couple of bomber towers for Daredevil here. Daredevil is clearly incredibly good at defending. Look at this, three castles, three bombard towers, not looking to go up any territory on this left side. It looks like very much a stalemate on this left side, it looks like the right side of the game. Uh, this match here is going to be what decides things. And actually there's a bit of a pushback now for Tiny Triss and uh, Ashley Lynn. They've actually managed to secure the trade again with a castle there from Ashley Lynn. It's an incredible back and forth game. Guess we kind of called it one hour into the game. This is absolutely insane. <laughs> that devil says I should get blast furnace. It's probably been missing that for the whole time. I suppose it doesn't have that much in terms of melee units anyway, so not necessarily a problem. Has got uh, skirmishes and arbs earlier on in the game. Yes. Oh, a forward castle going down for Ashley Lynn. That's a really strong position. So now we see a forward castle. This is definitely a strong pushback. Have a look at the units. A lot of hustle for Ashley Lynn. Looking to pounce now. Looks like they were just biding their time. So, really crazy. Biding their time, and there's another strong push here. Castle does go up, but uh, it's going to need some siege here from Grey and Purple to get rid of that. Halbs there coming out for Purple. And we don't see too much disruption of the trades anymore, so we're going to continue with the gold units. This game could probably go forever. It'd be interesting to see if this pumps like a wood race, uh, like a game for trying to control the wood. Tiny Triss is struggling on villagers, so I wonder if she'll be able to sustain this. I don't know if trade cards are included in the village account, because if they are, then uh, that's pretty bad, because it's quite low on village account. But if they're not, she does have a lot of trade, so that could be what's sustaining her right now. Yes. But all those hussars do melt, which is... Uh, oh no, I say that again, but the production is still there, so the hussars are coming out again. That castle is going to be going down by trebuchets from Grey, and that's actually going to be a really good pushback. I have to say, Promiscuative has definitely got the uh, economy back and buzzing. Have a look at that economy after being in Tatas earlier, has been able to spread the economy as well, so it's a lot more safer now. A lot of farmers there from Promiscuative. Oh, there's actually a strong pushback here from the left. Eleven archers don't look to be as strong as they once were. Skirmishers, onagers, and a forward town centre to go for the wood. It looks like they're really going to try and chop through here with the town centre. Offers a bit of a defensive position to push. And a siege elephant coming in for promiscuitive as well. So he is definitely right back into the game. Lots of siege elephants coming in for daredevils. So taking out the production buildings, this is actually looking pretty rough now for this left side. So... This is no longer that much of a stalemate. Some bombard cannons coming from Promiscuitive as well. This looks to be a very strong push. This actually might be a killer push on the right side of things. Though Ashlyn and Tiny Trish are being pushed back a little bit. But it looks like on the left side here, this push is going to be working faster with the amount of siege that's there. So Daredevil and Promiscuitive have broken into the base of Botkin Arab, but those elephant archers are definitely in the way. 
And they're going to be holding on for at least a little bit. Oh, there is a bit of raiding though. There are a couple of genitals on the trade line, which is very nice for the team. They can actually be able to try and snipe some uh, trade carts there. has to be said the trades for um, Jiraz and Grey are it seems just a little bit more protected uh, having said that this trade is still working nice and buzzing for the team on the right side of the map yeah ARPs have now been added by Daredevil just added in that support from behind the skirmishers and a couple of onagers as well, siege onagers to try and get some good shots on the elephant archers okay let's take a look at the resources, tiny triss has 3000 gold, absolutely insane a lot of trade cards I suspect not much gold coming in for grey though so it's been struggling I wonder if grey has that much trade going on, probably needs a bit more just doesn't have the gold there to spend. Oh, looks like Henk has now switched into elephant archers and halberdiers. We see the imperial camels there to snipe a lot of the uh, the skirmishers, allowing the elephant archers just to push back a little bit and a bit more protection there. There are some bombard cannons going there for uh, Daredevil so doing sort of like a bombard cannon creep that's actually very quite nice to get those forward positions secured. Okay, a couple of BBCs here for uh, Jiraz. Still trying to push here, Daredevils and uh, Promiscutive, but not managing to. The, the Elephant Archers here for Bodkin Arrow, just doing such a great job of healing. Uh, just sort of holding the line, I suppose, in a way. Looks like on the right side as well actually they have definitely a lot of military on the field not much that military to be seen for Ashley Lynn and Tiny Triss building up here in the back maybe looking just to combine forces and to have one strong push the gold income for having five relics for Ashley is so impressive here she's definitely going to have a lot of gold and she even says who needs gold talking about gold uh, she's got lots of gold to give Okay, the Hussar will be cleared out for uh, Ashley Lynn, so she's going to struggle now. They lost a lot of units there, and there might be a strong push here for purple and grey, perhaps.
for Daredevil is just saying the elephant archers are strong they are. These elephant archers have been there from the beginning. Just apparently no stopping them. Actually, there's a quite a strong push here on the right now for grey and purple looking to try and access the trade line which is actually very exposed here i've said it before but i don't want to say it again this could be the beginning of the end here if this assault does kind of work out but it remains to be seen we've seen a lot of pushbacks back and froze on this side so who knows how this will turn out Ashlyn looking to try and get another castle, probably like for the fifth time or something, on this trade line just to offer some protection. Which is two hero vills. Okay, so we see Jarrell saying anyone want to chop all the way around? Holy smokes. But this game could go on forever. Uh, guys, I have to be totally honest with you. I'm absolutely exhausted. It's gone past almost 1am for me here in the UK and uh, still casting this game. But I don't want to stop it. We've got so far. I don't want to stop it. So we're going to try and see this game out and see what they decide to do. They could actually try and chop through. It looks like Jaraz might do that in the economy. That would be pretty funny, actually. Uh, they could actually do that pretty nicely. It looks like they're slowly on the way to do that for this side as well. I'd love to see that, actually. Okay, so it looks like Grey's actually going to camp out some genitals on the middle of the map here just to get rid of the trade. That's actually really a good idea. This is really strong. Just going to be, this is going to be quite harmful for their economy if they can get this done. This ball of genitals looking to really, I oh, sorry, camel archers rather. I don't know, sorry, don't know why I said genitals, but camel archers looking just to get rid of the trade. Very, very nice here for Grey, sniping the trade very well. That could be the clutch play, clutch play actually. And uh, Ashley then does, I think it's Ashley who's just, yeah, pinging that, notices it. Uh, is a bit conscious of the fact they're losing so much trade here. So juicy. Actually, it might be, it actually probably isn't. It's Bodkinaro's point of view, so I think it's Bodkinaro or one of the, their teammates just showing that. Getting the traders, that is very juicy. The trade was exposed for such a long period of time. 
And our tiny just does send some Imperial Camel Riders to get hold of that. But the damage is done. They must have lost so many trade cards just then. Okay, so we see some check on throwers coming out for uh, promiscuity. That could be a really nice play actually against the elephant archers, uh, but they do need to be massed up in a large number. Tiny Triss has 4k gold, absolutely insane. Can produce for days. Look at the resources for Tiny Triss, absolutely insane. 146 villagers. Death Ball of Elephant Archers continues. But there are quite a lot of skirmishes there. That could actually cause a lot of problems. We see some Rattas here from the uh, purple player. The unique unit for the Megalis. Could be an interesting switch. But yeah, Grey is very hell-bent on getting rid of the trade, which is very nice. Tiny Triss has so much gold, though, to spare. Oh, there's a little bit of raiding with a couple of Hussar from uh, Jiraz there. Very nicely done. Jiraz is going for the trade as well. Looks like the team Jiraz and uh, Winston Waffles are really heavily focusing on the trade. Well, there's quite a bit of Hassa in the economy of Daredevils. Going to have to clear that up. Shiraz getting a, an outpost there, a very wise move. You never know when you're going to be chopped through. Oh, that's very interesting. So Tiny Triss has actually lost all of that gold. I don't know if she sent it as tribute. She's lost all that gold. I think she lost a lot of traders. That could be really harmful. And it looks like actually this side might be pushing now because Ashley Lynn is struggling a bit for gold as well, even though she has five relic relics, which is a bit nuts. It's like they're going to switching the market positions, maybe to get switch the trade a little bit, which could be a good idea because of how much. Uh, kind of pressure they are on on this side looks like the trade is pretty much going down here now the camel archers for grey just looking to snipe them has done a lot of job a lot of a great job and a lot of work of getting rid of those uh, looks like a bit of a push here on the left side as well red and uh, a couple of ratas here for purple moving to this side and also the hussa from Jiraz. Trying to push this back and probably is going to do quite well to do that. I think the traders going down for the other team has really hurt them very hard. And again, the uh, Lee Camel Archer is looking to snipe down the uh, Trebuchet Siege for Tiny Triss.
Oh, okay, so Chiraz is just with the trebuchet taking out that stone wall. Could actually run straight into the economy there with the Hussar. As we saw, Chiraz has been producing a lot of Hussar, so it'd be very interesting if he decides to move in there or not. The Camel Archer numbers are really building up now for the Berber player, Winston Waffles. Uh, looks like this is going to be really sticky because uh, those markets have to go down for the trade to be redirected. That trade route was not safe enough and uh, yeah we needed to wall those trade lines just like the other team did. It offers so much more protection and that's actually going to be the difference in this game I suspect. I wonder if we would see any Caravan Sarai. There is one Caravan Sarai there for Jiraz. That's actually very nice. So this will be healing these uh, traders, even if they're being pushed, which they haven't been, to be honest. You see the Caravan Sarai from Jiraz very nicely done all the way along the trade line. So the trading will be a lot more better as well, a lot more efficient. Very, very nice play there for Jiraz. So grey and purple are definitely pushing here on the right, looking very strong. On the left, they're kind of holding. They were pushing for a bit, but now the elephant archers are heading back to defend. Not able to push here on the left side. But on the, on the right side, definitely they're making good headway here. And I think this could finally be their window. Oh, actually, they do have... Uh, Tiny Triss does have um, the Caravan Sarai as well, which is very nice. Ford Castle going down for grade. This could be super, super important to get this up. Oh, but we see, we do see some raiding here, and we do see uh, Promiscuative being able to get into the trade of this team, and this is actually going to be very painful. It needs to be dealt with. If it's not, the trade will be going down for this team. That could be pretty, pretty bad. The Camel Archers have a really strong foothold now. Tiny Triss looks like she's going to be put out of the game very quickly now. No army really on the field and it's going to be pushed back very heavily. Let's just take a look, take a look at the military numbers. Yeah, Tiny Triss only has 17, 15 military. This could be the beginning of the end. On the left side, they just need to hold for as long as possible. Having said that, on the left side, they are being pushed and the uh, trade has been uh, dealt a bit of a blow with those Hussars that were raiding. I think those Hussars are now dead. Uh, but the trade is down now for Tiny Triss, and there's a castle here going in Tiny Triss's base. Tiny Triss will be out of the game very soon. She is cornered very badly. No chance of escape as well, it seems. Yeah, that defensive castle for Ashlyn does go down. That's actually a really big landmark in this game. Losing that castle could be a big deal. But it looks like this game is starting to wind down. It looks like it's coming to a close uh, very slowly. Very, very slowly. Wow. Almost 20,000 food in the bank for Winston Waffles. That's the one resource. <laughs> Winston Waffle asks, what resources do you need? Because he was floating so much. Uh, <laughs> and Botticadero asks for gold, but <laughs> uh, Winston Waffle says that's the one resource he doesn't really have. That and stone. Kind of funny. Okay, this is going to be looking very sticky for Ashley Lynn. Tiny Triss has almost been taken out of the game. A couple of siege elephants here to get rid of things. Uh, Ashley will be under pressure next for sure. On the left side there, they just need to hold. If they can hold, that would be super important for Bodkin Arrow and Blue. But they are managing to hold and I think that is the GG Ashley Lynn calls it. Rip the trade. The trade was the key in this one. It looks like there is the GG all around. One hour, 46 minutes on the game timer. Holy smokes, guys. I hope you enjoyed, 
Oh my god. Hope you guys enjoyed this casted game. I certainly did, but I have to admit, halfway through, I was incredibly tired and exhausted. I don't know if it was more exhausting to watch the game or to play in it. Let's take a look at the statistics very shortly. Let's have a look at the military numbers. The largest army there was for Tiny Triss, which was pretty impressive. She did have a huge army, only 55 there for Draz. I wasn't able to uh, really mass up those numbers, but Bodkinera holding the side as well, um, doing great work as the pocket, playing as the Bengalis. The economy side of things, a heck of a lot of trade. As we saw, Tiny Triss had been able to send a lot of tri tribute. It was actually Hank who had the most tr uh, trade, which is uh, rather surprising. Didn't realize that. Uh, look at that food income. 15, wait, what? 152,000, guys. Largest villager count was Jiraz, which is expected. Had only 55 army, 163 villagers. Very nicely done. Really strong economy. And, uh, guys, hope you enjoyed this cast game. If you did, do give the video a thumbs up. I have to tell you guys I'm exhausted, so I'm going to head off. Take care, and see you next time.